Hi there, my name is Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today is going to be the quick version of trying to fix this PlayStation VR headset. So with this one now, it does get power. The lights do light up at the back here, but there's nothing displayed on the screen and also there's no audio either. So we're going to take it apart and see if we can find out what's wrong with it. see any ribbon cables loose I was hoping that basically this HDMI cable that goes in here was going to be loose or maybe the ribbon cable for the screen was going to be loose but that all looks to be rock solid in there so I'm not too sure how repairable this is going to be we should be able to undo this now and see if it looks any bit dodgy or not but to me that's all connected really well I mean if you look at that there it doesn't look like it's loose at all, does it? And this one down here doesn't look loose either. Let's flip this up. So this is the thing that connects the screen. That looks absolutely fine. I wonder whether it's going to turn out to be a fault with the motherboard itself. Right, let's leave that disconnected. This is the sensor. Do you know what? It could also be a problem with the sensor, couldn't it? Because... If it's not recognising the sensor, then it's not going to turn itself on. So if the sensor's not working, if it never thinks a face is there, then uh, it's not going to turn itself on. So that could also be an issue. Unfortunately, I think with this, what I'm going to have to do is, I mean, I do prefer it if I can sort of fault find it in its own right, but it's going to be so complicated I think I'm going to have to take apart my working one and swap parts around to then find out what's the faulty bit because for example I'm not going to be able to know if the sensor here is faulty or not if I swap it over with the other one and it starts working I know that this part is faulty and then I can fault find it further but to try and fault find all of it without using another one is going to be very very hard so I think for this I will be swapping parts over to try and narrow down what the problem is motherboard is showing a display here so the faulty motherboard look I've got the good motherboard out here so it's definitely not the motherboard which I suppose is good the bad news is is that uh, it could well be the screen so now I know the motherboard's good I can start swapping over other components so have a look now can you see here the sensors working on this one right so I'm going to just swap over more and more bits until I prove what the fault is Sensor on now. Well, I said the 41. The sensor from the 40 headset. So now let's see if anything happens. Okay, so it's not the sensor. This is getting definitely interesting. Look, that's on there now. Wow. So it's not the sensor and it's not the board. So I think we are going to have to do the OLED screen. Oh, I hope it's not the screen. Here we go, faulty screen. And now let's see if it does anything. Yes, excellent, brilliant. Yeah, it's there. So it's not the screen. Wow, amazing. So it's not the sensor, it's not the motherboard, it's not the screen. I'm really running out of things now. All I can think of is it must be the cable. So let's swap the cable out and then see what happens. Right, so that's the suspected 40 cable in this thing here, which the rest of it is good. So now let's see what happens. 
Right, we've got lights on. There's nothing happening here. Right, so it's something to do with the cable. Right, OK, now it's just going to be a case of comparing the two cables and see if I can see any differences between them. Right, OK, we're starting to get somewhere now. So, amazingly, the faulty cable is only showing up faulty on one pin. So the whole of the power connector is OK. So if you have a look here, you see this connector here. That is all tested OK. Now, look at this HDMI connector. Do not go by the proper pin out for the HDMI because I've just done this myself. But if you look at pin number 12, which is 10, 11, 12, the third one along here, pin 12 should be going to number 16 on this pin thing here, you know, on this uh, triangle thing. Let me just zoom in. So what I've done is I've done like pin 1 is down the bottom and pin 40 is up the top. It should be going to pin 16, but it's not. It's not going anywhere. So there's actually only one fault on this, and it is pin number 12 is not going to pin 16. Okay, annoyingly, it's not where the wire meets the connector. I thought the fault would be here because this looks like the weakest connector, a sort of like non-standard connector. But I've gone across pin 16 and it is coming up on this tiny wire here. So I've stripped a tiny bit back and I've got continuity between here and here. I can't show it to you because it's going to be too awkward. But it means that the, the problem's not here. So I'm going to have to put a tiny bit of insulation tape just over the little bit of wire that I uh, stripped back and close this up here so I mean it's going to be very hard for me to pinpoint the fault now check this out I'm on pin 12 up here and when I go on here you can hear it's shorting out so it's definitely not a problem between the plug and this part here right so I've broken it down again and it's okay between here and here so it means the fault is between here and this bit here so I'm definitely definitely getting through it Right, excellent, I found a break. So I was taking out this wire here, just trying to strip it back, and look, it did pull out from here. So, just if anybody's interested, that's where it broke, right here, can you see? So where it comes through here, it broke there. So that, in this particular instance, was the weak spot. Now this is the wire I'm going to use to bridge the gap between here and here. So, I mean, it's going to look horrible because it's going to be going over this bit here. But there's nothing really else I can do. I'm not going to be able to feed that through all here. So it's uh, going to go from here and onto this purple wire here. And we'll see if it works or not. Right, good news, I have got continuity. So if you listen now, if I go on to pin 12 here, and if I go on to pin 16 here, it's quite awkward to do one-handed. Let me find it. There. There. Hold on. There we go. But that doesn't actually mean anything. Yes, there's continuity, which is good news. But look at this wire here, just out loose. I'm going to tape it together. But if that was part of a pair, for example, if they were twisted around each other, then all that noise is just going to go straight onto that pair, and that could be enough to stop the signal. Because remember, you've got a lot of high-speed data and stuff going down here, and that's what my worry is. And as well as that, I've cut it in numerous other places. But even if it doesn't work, it hasn't been a waste of time. Because now, if I ever come to do these again, and I think I might well do, because I'm re I have really enjoyed this one so far, I know now that this is always going to be the weak spot where the processor is on the ground and then this is where the wire flexes. So if you're having a problem with your cable, I think it would be quite a good point to start on this little section here and then you might get away with it. I probably, I might not get away with it because I've cut into it however many times, like I think it's one, two, three, I'm not sure, three or four times. But if you could just go straight to this point, give the wire a little tug, and if it was to come out from here, then you'll have more chance of the noise not affecting it. So now I'm just going to tape all this up, and then we'll put it back together and see what happens. So there we go, that's the big bodge job of sellotape, but 
it does actually feel quite strong. If it was just a small bit, then I could have used like a heat shrink on it and then uh, apply some heat and shrink it down and it would look nicer. But trying to get it all over these bits here would be too hard. Right, so it's testing time. So this is the faulty one. Put that to one side. This is the good one. Let's make sure that this is still working. Yeah, there we go. You can see it's gone blue in there. Yeah. Excellent. Right. Well, that still works. Let's turn this one off. And now we'll try the faulty one and see if this lead has actually worked or not. Plug that in. Plug that in. All right. Let's see if it turns on. Excellent, it turns on. Let's see if the lights come on. Brilliant, the lights come on. Right, moment of truth now. Here we go, let's see if it comes on or not. In fact, I can already see it. Yes, it's already on, look. Right, let's get the camera right down so you can see in there. Result, fantastic. So, it's, uh, it's working. Right, let's get the camera right in low. Right, so it's gone off at the moment, so I'm going to use the sensor here now. Ready? There you go. And now... I'm not sure if that's going to fight. There you go. There you go. All right. Now let me get the controller. One second. Sorry, it keeps wobbling. There we go. Excellent. It's gone off again because of the sensor. There we go. Every time I put my thumb over there, it comes on. So the sensor's working, and the screen's working, and it's working through both of them as well. What a result. I really enjoyed that fault find in there. Just going to quickly check to make sure that the actual uh, speakers are working on it. Excellent. They're working. Let's put the volume up full so you can hear it. Yeah. There we go. Right. Check this out. Hopefully you'll be able to hear this. Hopefully you can hear that. So what a result, really enjoyed doing that one. So hopefully you did too, if you did, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more trying to fix videos. Thanks so much for watching, take care, bye now.